What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. In this video, we're going to talk about my 10 top tips for SketchUp beginners. And these are also great tips for experienced SketchUp users as well. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So tip number one is to use keyboard shortcuts. So every tool in SketchUp has a keyboard shortcut either associated with it or you can assign one to it. These shortcuts allow you to access the various tools in SketchUp without needing to click on icons. Roughly, using keyboard shortcuts can cut your modeling time in half. Tip number two is to move along the axes. Often, you want to move objects both up and down and left and right simultaneously. However, if you try to move an object in both directions at once, your object may not go where you want it to go in the 3D space. However, if you move your objects along the red and green axes first and then along the blue axis, it's much easier to get your objects to move where you want them to go. Tip three, move with inferencing. When moving objects around in SketchUp, it can get a little difficult to get objects to go exactly where you'd like them to go. However, this process can be made a lot easier if you use inferencing to move objects around. For example, let's say you wanted to move a table and chairs so that they line up with the end of a cabinet. You can select and move your objects then hold the shift key to lock along an axis. Then you can move your mouse over the cabinet end and click to place your objects where you want them to go. Tip four, use the 3D warehouse. When you first get started in SketchUp, it's tempting to try to model everything that you need in your models yourself. However, SketchUp has a giant repository of free models ready for import into your model. Focus your time on modeling spaces and download as much furniture or other interior or exterior objects in the warehouse as possible to save on modeling time. Tip five, model using groups. When objects are not in groups, faces start merging and you start having issues when you try to move things around. By grouping your geometry, your objects no longer merge with other objects, allowing you to, allowing you to quickly and easily make changes and move objects around. Tip six, model using components. A lot of people are confused about the difference between groups and components. A component is an object that when you copy it, any change that's made to one copy will be reflected in all the other copies as well. A good rule of thumb is, if you think you'll ever have more than one of something in a model, make it a component. If you're not ever gonna make a copy of something, then a group will be fine. By modeling with components, this allows you to come back and make changes later without having to re-update every single copy of an object. Tip seven, copy mode. A lot of people don't know that the Move tool and the Rotate tool can actually be used to create copies of geometry. By tapping the Control key with these tools active, you can use them to create copies. By typing in a dimension, you can set the distance between your copies. Tip 8. Create multiple copies at once. Not only can you use the Move and Rotate tools to create single copies, you can also use them to create multiple copies. When you create a copy of an object, you can type times and the number of copies you'd like to make, then hit the enter key to make that number of copies. Note that as long as this is active and you don't click on anything else, you can type in new numbers and then hit the enter key to change the number of copies that you've made. You can do this as many times as you'd like as long as this tool is still active. Tip nine, create equally spaced copies between two points. Not only can you create multiple copies, you can also set an endpoint and then hit the divided by key and enter a number of copies to create equally spaced copies between two points. Like before, you can type in divided by number and then the enter key while this tool is active multiple times to see how different numbers of copies would look. Tip 10, use extensions. SketchUp and Sketchication both have large warehouses of extensions that can be installed in SketchUp to enhance its functionality. Resist the desire to try to model everything with native tools and be willing to try new extensions. They'll really expand your modeling capabilities. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about all of this? Did I leave something off the list that you would have liked to see? I might just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Now, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. 
That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That's got everything from links to some extensions you can purchase that help support the show to links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.